Welcome to Learning Chemistry with the Professor's Du Bois. This is Professor Corey, and today we're going to learn about dimensional analysis in the kitchen. You may be surprised that we are going to focus on kitchen measurements, but I think this is a good introduction to dimensional analysis because you are most likely familiar with the measurements that we will be using, and this will help you understand the concept easier. Once you get a handle on setting up a dimensional analysis problem, unit conversions in chemistry will be a breeze. Did you know that there are four cups in a quart? It's true. You can use a one cup measuring cup and measure a quart of liquid by filling the cup four times. We can also say that four cups is equivalent to one quart. If this is so, can you say that one quart is equivalent to four cups? The answer is yes. Two amounts in different units that are equal to each other is called a factor. What are some other factors? Those are good ones. What if I had two quarts? How many cups would this be? You can probably do this in your head, but let me show you how to set this up dimensional analysis style. A pro tip for dimensional analysis is to start with a number that is not a factor, only one unit, and make it a fraction by putting it over one. In this case, I will take two quarts, since it is not a factor, and make it a fraction by putting it over the number one. This is the same as saying two quarts divided by one, which is still two quarts. You can divide any number by one and it'll remain the same. The fraction will help us set up the problem correctly. Dimensional analysis involves multiplying by factors. Factors are equivalents, so I can use my four cups equivalent to one quart as my factor. When multiplying fractions, we cancel units if they exist as the numerator in one fraction and is the denominator in another fraction. Therefore, I know right away that I want to cancel the units of quarts, so I will write quarts in the denominator of the second fraction. These will cancel when I multiply. Next, I look for factors, and in this case, there is only one given, and that is four cups equals one quart. Since quart needs to be in the denominator, I will put cups in the numerator, then put in my numbers. Now cancel quarts and multiply the factors. There is more than one way to multiply fractions. I could multiply the numerators and write this number, then multiply the denominators and write this number, creating a new fraction. Last, I would divide the numerator by the denominator to get my result. Don't forget the units. Since the, since the units of quarts cancel, I'm left with cups. Another dimensional analysis pro tip is to make sure your desired units are in the numerator when all other units cancel. Now let's try an example that you may not be able to do in your head using the same factor. Four cups equals one quart. Here's a hint. Start with something that is not a factor. In this case, start with 27 quarts. Pause the video and try to solve the problem before viewing the detailed answer. The answer is 108 cups. This is achieved by putting 27 quarts over one to create a fraction. Next, I will set up my factor and put quarts in the denominator so they cancel. My factor is 4 cups equals 1 quart, so I will put the number 1 next to quart and 4 cups in the numerator. Another kitchen conversion is 8 tablespoons equals 1 half cup. We can represent 1 half as 0 0.5. This is the same number in decimal form and will make our math easier. The question is, how many cups are in 75 tablespoons? Pause the video and try this unit conversion. The answer is 4.7 cups. Start with something that is not a factor, in this case, 75 tablespoons. Put it over one to make a fraction. Start the factor by putting units of tablespoons in the denominator and look for factors. Our factor is eight tablespoons equals one cup. So the number eight goes in the denominator, next to tablespoons, and one cup goes in the numerator. Cancel units and solve. Sometimes we have to use multiple factors. For this problem, you will have two factors. Eight tablespoons equals one half cup, and four cups equals one quart. Pause the video and try this question on your own before viewing the answer. You will need to use both factors to solve the problem. 70 tablespoons is not a factor. Start here and put it over one to make a fraction. 
you will have to multiply by a factor, so choose a factor that includes tablespoons. Tablespoons will go in the denominator to cancel, giving us an answer in cups. Since we are looking for quarts, we're not finished. Multiply by another factor. We want to cancel cups, so this will go in the denominator and quarts in the numerator. Include the numbers, cancel units, and solve. You may prefer to do this in two steps, and that's okay. In this case, you solve for cups first, then put your answer with units over 1 and multiply by the next factor, and the results will be the same. Your final challenge will involve three factors. These are given. Pause the video and try to solve the problem on your own before proceeding. Another pro tip for dimensional analysis is to cross off the factors that you have used when using multiple factors. If you reuse a factor, you'll go in the wrong direction. The answer to this problem is 384 teaspoons. So next time you're baking and you have to measure two quarts, you can simply use 384 teaspoons. Well, maybe not. Practice makes perfect, and once you master these problems, you can impress your parents in the kitchen, and you will be well on your way to calculating conversions in chemistry. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to give us a thumbs up if you like the video, and subscribe if you would like to see more topics on learning chemistry with the Professor's Dubois.